Hey, what's everybody? This is Stu. Hey, this podcast is a uh, replay of a webinar that we did, um, and it's about health. Uh, health is a, a big piece uh, about uh, what we talk about inside the uh, Storehouse Mastermind. It's uh, we spend a whole month on it, and you know, one of the, th the our thesis uh, for health is that uh, kinetic men are intentional about creating positive daily habits that better our health. We are healthy. Connect men have a goal to be active centenarians. And for those that don't know what a centenarian is, uh, it's basically uh, living to 100 years old. And so uh, inside the Storehouse Mastermind, we actually uh, come up with a training program that uh, will enable us to make it to 100 years old. Um, and we identify uh, the gaps in that currently. And then we take action and, and go, um, you know, be better, be different, make uh, daily habits where we can... Um, Know, better our health. So go listen to this uh, webinar and uh, yeah, enjoy. See you. You're listening to Filling the Storehouse podcast. I'm David. And I'm Stuart. And we want to walk with you on the journey to living the abundant life through faith, family, and freedom. Our goal is to refine our why while helping you find yours. Together, achieve our best and highest purpose. In the end, we'll drive each other to intentionally fill our storehouse. Why don't you start off, Dave, sure. and then I'll I'll hit the uh, share screen here for a fun PowerPoint presentation. All right, gents. Well, hey, appreciate you guys showing up. And uh, just uh, so you know, this will be turned into a podcast as well. So anything, any dumb questions you may ask or any uh, comments that do not meet snuff that uh, that Stu says are all captured for perpetuity. So it's a it's going to be a great day. Hold That's on, awesome. Stu. Let me. Uh, Adjust my screen because that totally jacked my screen up. Sorry. Give me one sec. No, it's all right. All right, stop. Here we go. That's awesome. Good. On one sec. All right. Yeah, it it, uh, it took over. Okay, gents, we're going to start with the problem. And what we've seen in our lives, in the lives of our families, our friends, those in our network, we've, we've observed a general and very significant issue that forms the basis for the problems that we discuss on and that we continue to highlight through these kinetic life webinars and and really that boils down to uh, what i believe and what we believe is one of the biggest blind spots that we've identified is the lack of defining success and even in the areas that we say are our life's priorities we 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 do not dive deep and and define what success truly looks looks like uh, we we've seen also that that it really compounds the issue when we don't even really understand or have defined what those priorities are. And as an unfortunate and inevitable result, our lives are less fulfilling and they lack the purpose and meaning that we were created for. And that's that's really a big problem statement that we're trying to get after, not only through this webinar series, but through our mastermind and, and the things we're doing in Storehouse 310. Uh, and, and we're not trying to claim that this is a new concept, nor do we claim it as ours. Uh, as most of you, you guys are all very educated, well-read gentlemen on this call uh, I'm sure you've heard it, and it goes back to the 400 BC when Socrates was talking about the unexamined life not being worth living. But but we know and we have seen when we examine our lives and we determine what is most important, when we define the terms of what success looks like, and when we act, our lives are fuller and we can greatly impact those around us. Uh, today, the critical area we want to discuss is health. With a, With a quick show of hands and just leave them up. Who desires a healthy life? Raise your hand. I'm just kind of curious. Okay. One, eight, two. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, right? Dave with the virtual hand raise. I like it. I like it. Nice. You know, I, I, I'd argue that if you ask that same question in any room, anywhere in the world, every single hand will raise by the participants. Uh, chances are that each piece, each person will also have a vision of health that is unique and is different from everyone else in the room. But I also would venture to say that most people in the room have not spent the time considering what a healthy life truly means to them. So let's do a quick exercise. Come off mute real quick. Again, this is going on our podcast. It's for perpetuity, so don't say dumb stuff. Uh, so Stu, keep your keep your, keep your mic muted. Yeah, I'll mute uh, myself. But let's come off let's come off mute and and just give a, a real quick brief description of what health means. To you. Ready to go, anybody. Dave Prez, you're up. You're unmuted. 
You're unmuted, Dave. Uh, okay. I was unmuted, but uh, I'll take this opportunity to say, I, I think um, living a healthy life enables you to show up. Um, mm, that's good. You know, I guess so that your, your purpose could be manifested um, best, right? If you don't take care of all those things that fall in the category of health, you, you, you can't be the best dad, the best husband, the best leader at work, the best friend, et cetera. So I think it all stems from that. I love that. Can show up. Any Anybody else want to just throw a quick stab out there? Yeah, if, uh, if I was going to boil it down to one word, I'd say balance. You know, I, I think, you know, we've all seen times in our lives where we get out of balance and we're not operating close to 100% when we do so. And so I think when you when you focus in on your mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual buckets, and you try to achieve some sort of balance with those, um, you're going to ultimately be in a better state of health. Love it. Yeah. Love it. No, appreciate you guys. Uh throwing that in there i think i think showing up and, and balance are extremely powerful uh extremely powerful for for you know have, have huge implications for what we do with our lives and 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 it gets us in that path so i appreciate you guys you know so so as we've looked at health from a holistic point of view we recognize that this can be a very daunting topic right so where do you start is it physical health and, and that's usually seems like the most obvious uh you know physical health seems like the most obvious place because there's I mean, just look around, right? Billions and billions of dollars spent every year on diets and gym memberships. And and that's just a huge, strong testament to people's obsession with physical health. And then think about, think about our own lives, right? You know, there's mirrors everywhere, whether you're in the gym, you're walking by a building that has those windows. Don't lie. Don't lie. You know, you're looking at the, the windows to see a reflection. You're not trying to see in the building. You know, they're mirrored windows. So what, what are you looking at? You're looking at yourself. Like that's just a natural part. It's so obvious. It's what It's what we do, right? But and I agree. I think physical health is absolutely critical to well-being. But what about mental health? You know, for those of us who've struggled, does does it really matter how physically fit you are? If you live in a cloud, you're anxious and you're depressed. Does does your physical health really in that moment matter all that much? And and throw in spiritual health for good measure. You know, if you don't feel secure and spiritually content, assured in the hope and comfort of your beliefs, can can you truly enjoy your physical or mental health? I mean, these are just questions, or right? I'm not suggesting that you can or can't. I'm just I'm just offering a, a a point of view. And then there's social health and environmental health and relational health, and the list goes on and on and on. It's it's an extremely daunting thing, and, and there are plenty of high performing you know individuals on this call. How about sleep health? How's you guys asleep? I think that's a good one that we could probably focus our entire time on is just talking about sleep. And so with this overwhelming amount of health considerations, where do we start? And I truly believe the answer is yes. Yes. We, we just start. Because the best part of health is that each of us can do something about it today. All right. So question is what do we do about it what do we what do we do about confronting this you know huge topic of health um let's go back to like what how we start right what do we what do we see people doing what what have we done in the past you know it typically starts with, with some type of aspiration whether it's physical mental um spiritual we we have an idea of what we want to accomplish what we want to perform uh, we set a goal for ourselves uh and then we move into this action phase right um, we, we, we join a gym or we buy a sleep monitor or, you know, we research the best weight loss, some, you know, new fad diet. And, and we start kind of taking action on that. Maybe we even like start to take our spouse out on a date. Um, but what ends up happening is that starts to fade over time. Right. Like, and this is all typically happens around the new year. We, we set these new goals for the year. We start taking action. And then typically around, I don't know, maybe this time, like three, four months into it, we start to lose focus. We stop, you know, going to the gym. Uh, we stop taking that diet that we started, you know, at the beginning of the year. And why is that? And and David and I think that there's a really major critical aspect that's missing um, to this. 
we're honestly, we're just not asking why, like, why, why do we want this in our lives? You know, why do we, why do we want this certain goal? Why do we want to be healthy in this, in this arena? And, um, you know, like, why is it so important to be physically healthy? Why is it so important to be spiritually healthy? You know, we don't really spend the time to like contemplate what that really looks like. We're not intentional about going through this step, this one specific step of asking ourselves why we want to be healthy in that one arena. And then also a lot of times we're alone in this process. We don't purposefully seek out a community uh, that we can, you know, come alongside and, and join in this goal setting phase of being healthy in whatever arena with it we choose. You know, if we want to be a bodybuilder, but we choose to go hang out with a group of marathoners, probably, probably not going to work out so well for us, right? So there's there's really two questions, and there's two questions that we need to ask ourselves. One, when, where, and how are we going to actually take action on this goal of, of becoming healthier in that arena. And two, what do we have to do to maintain and continue the growth in that, in that area? And so, you know, David and I, and, and the men in, in the storehouse mastermind, um, we've, we've defined these areas in our life. We've actually defined what spiritual health looks like. We've defined what physical, mental, relational health look like and how they kind of come together to create happiness in our life. Um, you know, so for an example here, like David and I, we've figured out that all of these areas of, of health, like happen for us, one of these places that happen for us is on the mountain and David and I, uh, and we invite other people to come with us, like physical health, check mental health, getting up on the mountain and going, having fun, check spiritual health, like getting into a place and being like quiet and just like looking at everything out there that God has created check like all of these things. And we, and then we put it on the calendar we put it on there and we go do it. I mean, weekly, right? Like Thursdays is our day to go to the mountain and we go play and we have fun, but it's a check in the box for us. Uh, we've asked, we've asked these questions and then we've answered them and then we go take action and we go do it. So it's literally taking like bite size action steps once you've defined those and, def and then figured out how you're going to go do it and who you're going to do it with. David, over to you. Yeah, and, and, and when Stu mentions bite size, this needs to be bite size enough to make it to your counter tomorrow. Yeah, right. That's the gap. And I, I want to talk you. We're going to talk through three steps that that we can literally build a bridge from the problem to the solution and how to gap that. All right. So so step one. Let's start by defining one area of health that you want to address. But be very, very specific. When I say one area, I want you to be very specific. So when I say, you know, hey, think about health, what is the first thing that pops in your head? So I say, think about health, what's the first thing that pops in your head? Okay. And it can be for where you're at, it can be physical health. You could be overweight or you can not be where you want to be. Maybe it's mental health, maybe it's spiritual health. Whatever that thing is that immediately pops to the top of your head, take note of it. Is it spiritual? Is it mental? Is it physical? Is it relational? What, what is it? And remember, this is an important point. Do not allow this exercise to overwhelm you, okay? Because I know what I have been subject to in the past is I think of all the air, different areas that I want to be uh, healthy. And I want all these different changes to be in my life. And I want to look like this. I want to sound like this. And I want my 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 faith to look like this. And and, I, and there's all these different commitments that come out of it. So So I want you to remember... Do not allow this exercise to overwhelm you. And while it is good to think of all those things, it's good to think of all the ways you want to be healthy. Limit yourself to one priority area to start. Do not allow a huge list of, of desired improvements to stress you into inaction. Okay. That's a big key of this is, is make it very bite sizable, very actionable. Anything you do, no matter how small, is an important improvement over what you have not been doing. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. Anything you do, no matter how small, is an improvement over what you have not been doing. Okay, so simple, specific, consistent action will inevitably make a huge difference. So I'm going to take a timer out real quick. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Okay, so 30 seconds. 
And what I want you to do in these next 30 seconds is write down the one area that you want to see your health improve. So it shouldn't take 30 seconds. This should already be, you know, this is in my mind, it's already batting around. So, you know, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to cut it into a third. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Write down that thing that has come that cropped to the top of your head. Ready? Go. All right. Awesome. Step two, decide on at least one, but no more than three. So I'm going to say that again. We've got a bunch of high achievers on this call, and I know that to be true. So we're going to decide on at least one, but no more than three. You have to limit yourself to three actions that you can start implementing now. So what does that look like? I'll be very specific. So for me, if, if spiritual health reaches the top excuse me, if, if spiritual health reaches the top of my list, well, there's there's three very specific things that I can do every single day. One, I get up in the morning and the first thing I do is read the Bible. That That is a that is an actionable step. And that doesn't mean you're reading the Bible, right? It's not like uh, you know, a thousand pages. You're reading a chapter. Maybe you're reading a verse, whatever it is. If that's important to you, that's a step. The next step is, is attend church regularly, right? I, I want to take my family. I want to be a church going family. So spiritual health is important to me. We're going to do this as a family. Find a church. Uh, this is something I did recently here, you know, in, new in Colorado. Uh, I'm 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 refining uh, a church home for my family. So this is a very uh, this is a very realistic point for me. And then join a small group. Maybe that's step three. You join a small group. You get connected with a group of men, or maybe it's a couples group. Whatever it is, you just take these small actionable items and make it to your calendar and you execute. You can do that with any area of health. Uh, so it's just limit it so that you can actually take action on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there's a couple important points here. If you choose something you cannot or will not do, and if you're honest with yourself, you, kn you know what these things are, right? If you choose something that you cannot or will not do, you will remain in a state of self-deceit and be outside of integrity with yourself. That's a very important thing. I wrote it down. My wife said it the other day, and I, and I literally made a list of all the areas of my life where I'm outside of integrity with who I want to be or who I'm saying that I am, okay, and not honoring. So the more you lie to yourself, the easier it is to remain where you are and, and even move further away from your desires. There's a very obvious examples out there, right? Dieting. I don't know about you guys, but this is an area that I struggle. People eat, or I say, I'm going to say me, I own it. I eat unrealistically clean and I'm on this schedule and then I fail one time. And then what happens? I justify the binge, right? Well, I did it once. So now I'm going to binge it. And that pizza that was yesterday, I was it was a discipline item. I'm gonna crush that thing. Dessert, let's throw some desserts on top, and you know what? For good measure, let's wash it down with some beer. I'm not saying any of those things are wrong. I'm just saying we tend to go the opposite direction because we're not truly uh, doing things that we are realistic to us in our situations. But once you decide, put that thing or those things on your calendar and, and do them and prepare for success. Look, if it's reading the Bible in the morning, put the Bible where you make your where you make and drink your coffee, right? Put a pen on the cover and, and you're ready to go to take notes. And it's simple. If it's working out, what do you do? You put your clothes out. You put your clothes out. You put them on right when you get up. Now you're ready to go. The excuses start falling out the, start falling out the window, right? So make sure that you, you prepare for success. Again, another point to remember, celebrate your victories, man. Celebrate your victories. You will fail. Just don't fail multiple times in a row. So you're going to fail. Just don't do it multiple times in a row and celebrate your victories. All right. And the last thing, be accountable. What does that look like? Join a group, you know, make, make a new health goal, make that public, uh, do something to put your skin in the game. And even here, here's a crazy thing. Make it enjoyable, make it fun. Going to the gym, meeting your buddies at the gym and getting a workout in can be a lot of fun, especially if you're working out with someone like Stu, you know, pick someone like Stu, and then you always feel super strong. You always feel super good looking by comparison. You always feel like a huge success. So, so pick your partners and, and make it enjoyable. Why you got to be that way, man? I love you, dude. I love you. I probably <laughs> make you feel like you're very trim. <laughs> I do. Um, all right. So what if we don't? What are the stakes? Um, what are the consequences of not living this healthy life and getting going and doing the action steps that David was talking about? It seems like pretty basic question, but, and, and, you know, there's a lot of basic answers here on the screen of, of, you know, problems, challenges that we can face with not being healthy, but 
but think about like go a little step further and, and think about it think about what resonates with you you know what what would happen if you aren't you know physically healthy mentally healthy spiritually healthy for for, for me like when i think about that you know i've i've have lived experience of not being healthy in these multiple areas of life you know if i'm uh not spiritually healthy i i'm confused that there's no meaning there's no purpose in my life um if you know there's there's anger and tension and i take it out on my loved ones right i take it out on my kids i take it out on my spouse if i'm not you know physically there physically healthy you know i, I feel tired i feel weak um if i'm you know not mentally there and the same thing i i just there's this aggression there right and my frustration grows like every day and there's a failure and there's a void in my life so like doing something simple like what david was talking about reading the bible in the morning like that just gets my day going working out in the morning like exercising right the first thing in the morning like so what are those things that you're doing in your life every single day that you can kind of get this thing going in motion you know think about you know physically you know like why why do you want to be physically healthy it goes back to that why do you want to um you know dance at your children's wedding do you want to get down on the floor when you're a grandpa or a grandma uh, and be able to play with your grandkids and then be able to get back up like those are some of the like the things that are real like those are the things that you really want to get to uh for that like, like that bigger why right so um, you know, and last month we talked about intimacy. We talked about relationships. You know, what if you weren't healthy uh, with, you know, the most important people in your life and those relationships in your life? Like there's scientific data. And we talked about it on our last webinar last month. There's scientific data that, that says like to be happy in life. The only thing really that to, to be happy in life is just have strong relationships, have re positive relational health, right? That could change your life. If, if you, if you start to make improvements in those areas uh, of your, of your life. So just think about that. We challenge David and I challenge you to, again, take five minutes, go through this exercise and pick, pick a topic, write down what that is, describe what health looks like in those areas. And then, you know, what are you going to do to change the trajectory of your life in that area? And is it worth it? I I'd, I'd personally say yes. I personally say yes as well. Yeah. So, so we so we agree there. Fist bumps. That this is uh this is important. Hey, and and I think one important point to that as well. When you take those five minutes, it's just five minutes, five minutes, one time commitment to do this. Do not put the standards of what other people you think other people's uh, standards are for you. You know, if you don't want a six pack, don't put a six pack. Right. Yeah. Good point. If you do want a six pack, put a six pack. But but I think it's really important that you that you highlight this and, and define it for yourself. So what are the positive stakes? I think the most important and most amazing thing about health is that you can define what it looks like and you personally can make small, uh, powerful adjustments that will change your life forever. And it's within your grasp, right? Uh, James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits, he talks about the power of tiny compounding changes and how over time the growth is exponential. So you can develop the spiritual disciplines you long for. You can have the relationships you desire, experiencing closeness, intimacy, and and meaning with those you love you can lose the weight you can gain the muscle you can achieve the healthy life you desire it, it, all these things are within all our grasp we can do it but but let's be let's take a, one moment to be extremely honest with ourselves it does not happen overnight right because if we are honest with ourselves we didn't get to where we currently are overnight either and i think it's always good to balance and and, and recognize and understand that we are where we are from a lot of decisions that we've made in order to get somewhere else, it requires the same level of effort. So with intentionality to define and pursue your health, you know, we could start this thing today, whatever that area it is. Uh, so we recently had a conversation I want to share with you. This, this picture on the, uh, on the slide is a guest that we recently had in our podcast. And, and he hit a very, very dark place spiritually, mentally, and physically. He was in extreme pain from a, a sickness that he had and or that he has it endures to this day and, and every part of his life suffered as a result and contemplating suicide for him was not unusual so it's kind of the norm so one day he decided he was gonna he was gonna take a walk 
And he, he got up and it had been so long for him that he could barely make it to the end of his driveway. That's how far he went. He walked back. And I think he said he took a nap for however many hours just from a walk to the end of his driveway. That's that's the state he was in. But every day he was committed, he kept adding steps, single steps, turn around and come back. And, and soon he was hiking. And then he was rucking. He really got into rucking. And eventually he climbed 56 14ers in two years. Now, I don't know if you guys know what a 14er is in Colorado. I think there's 58 14ers. It's peaks above 14,000 feet. He climbed 56 of those in two years. Most people do one a summer. So he was crushing it. And, and he started a movement that was bringing awareness to veteran suicide. He rekindled his faith and he experienced tremendous growth, contentment, peace, and he transformed his entire life. But again, it, it didn't happen in a matter of days and it didn't start with some crazy effort or these intense workouts, right? It, it started by barely reaching the end of his driveway. And so what's stopping you from taking the first step? What's stopping me from taking the first step? I truly believe that most of us don't take that step because we see a marathon in front of us and it's too daunting and it's too far. But I think we sometimes need to remember that a marathon starts with a single step. Yeah, I think there's, you know, a lot of challenges right now with, um, you know, specifically there's a lot of military veterans on on this call and there's a lot of, you know, people listening on our podcast that are military veterans. There's, there's a lot of challenges with, with mental health, with spiritual health. Um, there's a lot of challenges with veteran suicide, suicide right now. And I think, you know, going through these action steps and thinking about these, these areas is, is can truly be life-changing. You know, it was life-changing uh, for our friend, Matt, you know, who started 22 Peaks Project. Um, we know this stuff works and and we've seen it. We've seen men's lives transformed guys like Matt, you know, with 22 peaks project. And that, and that wasn't because of him listening to us. Right. Um, that was him just defining it. And then, you know, from us talking to him and learning from him, like what did he do to, to get out of, of, of where he was, you know, we defining what's truly, what health truly means to us as individuals. And then, you know, we align our, our efforts and our reality, uh, to, to make decisions, you know, based off of that, we take the time to define those areas in our life that we want. And we envision what health looks like in those areas. And then we make a plan to bridge where we are and where we want to go. It's just like, uh, you know, a, a GPS, right. You, you can't go where you want to go unless you know where you're starting from. Right. So you got to start somewhere. You got to have to find where you are to find where you want to go and then find the roadmap to get you there. Um, you know, we continue to see men growing uh, in the storehouse mastermind. Guys are getting off like lifelong medications. They're, they're getting fit. You know, they're, they're changing their, their eating habits. They're getting closer to God and finding their spirituality again. Uh, they're can, reconnecting with a family that, you know, you know, one of our, one of our brothers, like, reconnected with his dad who left him at the age of five, right. And, and building that relational health again, all these areas in, in your life, like we're seeing men do it. And it's amazing. Um, so, you know, the best part is like anyone can do it. It really is. Any, any person on this call, um, can really start living a healthier life today. And, and I mean, we'd, we'd love to you know be there to help you on that journey. If, if you're interested. All right. So what, so let's, uh, let's do a call to action. We're all military guys here. We like calls to action, right? And if you're not military, my apologies. So here's what we'd like you to do based on today's conversation. If you're local to Colorado, find us on meetup.com. And that, that can be a little bit challenging. So we made it super easy. And there's also a direct link on our website. And come join us for our weekly Kinetic, Connecting, Kinetic Connection events, uh, where we do something fun almost every Thursday. Uh, we're either going snowboarding, hiking, climbing, doing a workout, mountain biking, uh, going to grab coffee, going to grab lunch, going to grab a beer. There's a lot of breweries out here. So there's so many fun things to do out here locally. And and we're just trying to build a community and do those things together. And that, that happens on Thursdays. So this Thursday, if you are local, uh, we'll be meeting at Monkey Mongoose Coffee in Lone Tree, Colorado. And if uh, if you can't make that, and even if you're not local, just come out. Hey, Dave, if you want to come out and have a cup of coffee, you have a place to stay. Just stay at my house. We'll go get coffee. I'll take it back to the airport and you can uh, fly back to Florida. But, you know, there's, no, there's no limitation. I do not want to limit anybody. We're not going to pay for your flight. On these. So you get here. Is it, is no, it no, this no. Thursday? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one, yeah, yeah it, it's one, it's yeah. too late. I would have had to leave. Yeah, you had to leave. You had to leave. Yeah, you had to start walking. Your flight cancellations. cancellations. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, yeah, no, that's true. Goody, we're, let, we're let me let me add a challenge that we didn't discuss. It just kind of came up, and you know, so so Goody and I, we're trying to do these local meetups like here in Colorado and go take action on, on these areas of our life, uh, you know, for our health, I challenge you guys to start it in your own area too. Like wherever you are, you know, if you're in Florida, start, start doing meetups in your area and start, you know, getting out there and taking action and, and going on runs or, uh, you know, swimming in the ocean or whatever you do in your area, start it, start it there in your local area. Yeah, and, and and I firmly believe, and again, this is something we've seen through, uh, specifically through the mastermind or network of folks, is is dudes are lonely. I mean, let, let's just be honest. A lot of us men do not have a lot of friends. We don't hang out. We, we have our families, which is great, and it's beautiful, and I love that, but we're not doing things outside the home. And so that's a great challenge, too. I think, you know, it, and you could be the catalyst for that, right? And what's the worst that could happen? You go to a coffee shop, nobody shows up the first time. Okay. So they don't show up the first time. So so you have a cup of coffee, uh, take your computer, read a book, whatever. It could still be, you know, it can be something meaningful. And then, and and just the more you do it, it it's like a honeypot. Guys will show up and and who knows what it can turn into. But I, I guarantee you, if you don't do it, I could tell you exactly what it'll turn into right now because we're super smart and special. And we can project those things in the future. Uh, so if, if you are out here, if you're going to be out here, we're doing that coffee. And then next week, uh, next Thursday, we're going to be up in the mountains for snowboarding and skiing, right? So we're, we do these things relatively consistently. And and again, if nobody shows up next Thursday, but Stu and I, I mean, how bad of a day is a day spent up in the mountains snowboarding? Like, that's going to be an awesome day. So it's, it's, it's uh, the only downside is the company that I keep. But besides that, I'm in the mountains and it's going to be awesome. Uh, if you enjoy listening to podcasts, find our podcast called Filling the Storehouse. Again, you can link through that uh, on www.storehouse310.com, our website. Uh, you can find it on any, excuse me, you can find it on any major podcast host and, and, and give us a listen. And if you enjoyed today's conversation, we have a lot more like this and typically have some pretty amazing guests. So it's uh, it's an enjoyable show. And if you're interested in, in our powerful men's retreats, join us May 1st through 3rd. We got this thing scheduled in Empire, Colorado. It's going to be awesome. We have an incredible guest speaker lined up, and we've got some some uh, uh, some pretty awesome activities planned for for the retreat as well. So three days, one through three May, uh, come join us. And if you uh, you can find details again on our website, or you can reach out to Stu or me, and we can discuss directly. So again, check it out www.storehouse310.com. Hey, I really want to take a sec to just uh, express my gratitude and appreciation for you guys showing up, listening to us, giving us your time. Uh, it, it's it's really special for us that, that you showed up. We, we love doing these kinetic living webinars, um, things that we're talking about, things that we're thinking about, just want to try to add value to others. And for those of you who don't know, I'm David, the less handsome guy that talked, uh, that that's Stu. And and we founded Storehouse 310 because we are absolutely on a mission to help men become the heroes of their journey. It's something that we're super passionate about so that men can become the, the men their wives celebrate, the men their daughters want to marry, and the men their sons want to become. So thank you again. Appreciate you guys. Keep it real. Be healthy. Do something. Define it. Hey, I'm just curious. Uh, someone come off mute and... and- Give us uh, what area that you identify that you need to work on, what you're going to do to take action on it. Shad, thanks for showing up. You joined us like right at the very end of the presentation. Good job, dude. Way to be a kinetic man. <laughs> He's army, dude. Perfect He's army. Timing. They can be, they'll yeah. be early on uh, for some formations, but you know, you put a webinar on. Yeah. Forget about Can't it. show up for that one. <laughs> love you guys. Nothing but love, Shad. You too, buddy. Nothing but love, Shad. All right. One person that, that little exercise we did, just, I'm just curious, what's the area that you identified as it that you want to work on? Hey guys. Uh, first of all, thanks for, for doing this and allowing me to plug in. Uh, it's always good to get proof of life on Stu. I'm here. Um, but, uh, I kind of went through a personal health crisis about a couple of years ago, left the Navy and I, I've been through the, you know, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, 
rehab process. And uh, my kind of takeaway, which kind of came late in the game, was how important the mental part was. Um, they say if they say everybody should meditate like 10 minutes a day at least. And if you're too busy, you should meditate for two hours. Um, yeah. And I thought it was I kind that. of a bunch of wonky stuff. But by doing that, and I just started a few months ago, it really created the foundation for all the other stuff to kind of be magnified. Uh, I'm more present. I practice gratitude. My physical health improved. I'm more spiritual because I'm more plugged in. Um, and so I just wanted to throw that out there and share it because it definitely helped me. I love that, dude. Thank you for sharing, yeah. man. Yeah. And I'll tell you, if I can meditate, so it's something I've been getting, I've, I've gotten uh, the last few months way more serious about it. For years, I had made excuses why someone with my brain, like I'm so just constant and it is, it's been transformative, dude. I, I really appreciate you sharing that because it's, we can all do it. The excuses are just that they're excuses. And once you kind of, you know, just find that place and plug in, it's pretty rad, dude. So thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Hey, let me build something on, on what Ryan said, because something about 20 minutes ago, but when he said balance, uh, mm -hmm. kind of resonated, you know, and balance is not allowing things to fall off and then come back to the middle and fall off and then come back to the middle. Right. Balance is something you work on constantly trying to trying to, you know, keep it right in there. And one of the things that I've learned with the with the mastermind early on. Everyone in there is like extremely successful. And in the business and organizational side of things, they know how to do a lot of those things. But when we open up in a vulnerable, safe space like the mastermind is, we start to learn that we all, you know, a lot of us lack in some of those personal domain areas, whether it's intimacy, whether it's health. Uh, and, and and we really know how to do it in our as leaders, but in leaders in our lives, in our families, sometimes we fall short, uh, and we and we see how uh, many successful men neglect themselves. Uh, and then one of the things that, because I'm an open book, I, I shared um, as I retired uh, last November was. What Ryan, you know, sort of experienced some emotional stuff, uh, some mental stuff. And I'm like, this stuff creeps up on you. And if you're not doing something that's sustainable and you're not you don't have like buddies like these two and other people that I reached out to to help balance me when I needed it. Um, you know, it could be scary. It could be scary. And so I'm 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 super grateful that are about uh, a month and a half ago, I had those people. Um, so just wanted to share that. And thank you, Ryan, for reminding us of the balance. My pleasure, Dave. Yeah, that was power that's powerful stuff, dude. When <laughs> Dave, uh, he also has showed us by example what it looks like to constantly dance with your wife and, and uh, enjoy life and to be... But, but, you know, and all, all joking aside, sometimes you need to see something like that to be like, I want to, maybe, maybe that's for all these years I've, I've not danced with my wife. Maybe that's something I'll love or, or, or not, but, but just even simple like things to see other men doing can, can be the door that opens up an experience and an opportunity uh, in our own lives. So it's, it's been powerful. I love it. Or even better dance with me. I love dancing with you, dude. I can't <laughs> wait till May. May for those of you guys, Dave will be there in May, and there will be some dancing. Um, all you can do is hope to keep up, though. Dave's got some. Dave's got some skills. Got some moves. Got some skills. Yeah, he does. He does. That's good, man. That's good. Anybody else want to just give just a little insight into what you're gonna area you're gonna focus on? And the reason I ask is uh, a lot of times when we share what we're focusing on, it also opens up opportunities and, and just things we have not considered, right? So Ryan saying what you just said, it makes a huge impact on me because I've kind of gotten away the last week. My my head my headspace uh, thing uh, membership ran out, so I've used that as an excuse to not plug back in. So now you just saying that 
um, it is completely challenging me to, I will rectify that this afternoon. So thank you. So when other people share, that's, that's my point. There's things that come up. You're like, oh man, I need to take action. Uh, yeah. Thanks guys for doing this. I really appreciate it. It's a good, good reminder to focus on the things that actually matter. And I think that's what I get out of pretty much all your guys' content is that, Hey, whatever we spend our time, our energy, our money on, that's what we value. Those things are what we value. And just being reminded of, um, you know, being intentional with where those efforts are going and, and what you're spending your time, energy and money on. And kind of taking a, a deep, hard look at that and figuring out, um, you know, where do I need to check myself? And for me, probably my relationships, you know, with my family, um, it's been a constant effort, but I just got out of the Navy last year in May after 10 years. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of repairing, I think happening after the military time, after missing the birth of my first two kids and just kind of all the ups and downs and the roller coaster and constantly moving, um, this is definitely the longest period we've all been together in the same place with some kind of stability. So I think there's a lot of um, relationship building going on that is unique. And uh, so I think just really focusing in on that because when, when the family's happy, I'm happier. And uh, yeah, that relationship thing is huge. And I know, like you said, it's, it's the science of it too, right? Um, whenever they look at those blue zones and the areas where they live the longest and they're the happiest, it's not just diet. It's not just lifestyle and, and how they conduct themselves. It's also the community piece and how much they have relationship with one another. So it's huge. So yeah, I think for me, it's, it's that piece right now working on it. That's awesome, Aaron. I appreciate you sharing. Where, where are you? Where are you located? So I'm outside of Houston right now, a little town called Montgomery, okay. northwest of Houston. So my last tour was yeah. in Okinawa. So we were in Japan for the last three years. Um, and then, yeah, I've been out here for the last year or so. Yeah, it's awesome. Aaron, you're, you're not unique, man. I mean, um, you know, there's a lot of military guys and gals that, that go through this struggle. You know, we, we move around from, from location to location, you know, the, the, the military, the army, the navy, whatever branch you're in, they 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 give you a job, they they give you friends to hang out with uh, for three years, and then you move again. They they give you a, a schedule and a calendar, and you got to show up. But then at some point, like all that goes away, and um, you know you got to figure it out on your own, right? Like the community goes away, the mission goes away, the purpose goes away. Like all these things that were kind of handed to you, right? Every three years, a new set of friends, a new calendar, a new mission. That all goes away, and so uh, it, that that relational piece, that community piece, is is huge. Um, and I think a lot of a lot of uh, men specifically don't plug back in. Uh, they get so focused on their career and their job and making money and providing for their family that that they lose focus on having fun and having friends and being healthy and in all these areas that kind of go by the wayside. And, and we say this because David and I went through it, and it's honestly why. Uh, we started the storehouse mastermind because uh, we were so focused on building wealth and making money and buying real estate and, you know, grinding and hustling that, that like our the closest ones to us, our family, our close friends, they were, they were suffering for it. So um, you're not alone in it, man. And uh, thank you for, for speaking up on it. Yeah. Aaron, one, one thing uh, I'm going to, we're going to do a, well, I haven't told Stu this yet. Uh, just, took these notes down, but uh, we're going to do a podcast on this and, and I'll probably do some writing on this, but there's five points that were came up in church yesterday. One of the best sermons I've heard in a, a very long time, five points in, in his uh, um, uh, to a healthy marriage first get help. Right. So he said, marriage counseling is a sign of wisdom, not weakness. And I, and I love that. So get help uh, to date your spouse and, and he talks about, uh, he talked about a verse that talked about cleaving, you know, cleaving to your wife. And he's like, I didn't, you know, I'm a biblical scholar. I never even thought of what that meant. And it means to pursue and to continue to pursue. And so he, he highlighted that men like to pursue what we don't have 
And then when we have it, we, we stop. Right. So that's why we love hunting. You know, you, and then you get the game and, and it's done. So, so get help, date your spouse, have great sex. And you said a lot of that is about communication, right? It's about not, you know, if you join a marriage to serve and not be served, it, it takes marriage to a whole nother level. And then that relates to, to sex and communicating. And it's not always about, you know, us thinking about the rejection that we felt or, or any of those things. It's about communicating what, uh, and also that communication gets rid of false narratives. Uh, the fourth is pursue your God. So he, he highlighted Jeremy McGuire saying, you complete me, you complete me. And she said, you have me at hello. And just that's a bunch of bull crap, right? Like, it's not about you complete me. Cause if your wife is the one that completes you and all of us have been married for a few years, know that, that that's just that, you know, she completes you for in the honeymoon phase. And, and then uh, once you get out of that, she just, she, she annoys you quite frankly. Right. And you annoy her. You're annoying at that point. And so your wife being the person that completes you is a very unrealistic expectation. So, so in the context of this sermon in church, pursuing God as, as the one that completes you is, is appropriate um, and fulfilling. And then uh, uh, five is just don't quit. Always persevere, right? He's, and, and one of the things he talks about love and the Bible talks about love always perseveres. So we all have issues. None of us are perfect. We just have to keep going. And, and, and we did say things like till death do us part. Um, you know, and, and love is a choice, right? Feelings come and go, but we can choose to love one another. So the, there are five points, get help, date your spouse, have great sex, pursue your God, and just don't quit. We're five that, you know, as you were talking that just kind of, I, I just wanted to share that with you. And Dave asked me directly, do you attend church service with your family? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to make a, about the great sex, uh, <laughs> the great sex comment, but what to, to, to the point, I didn't read your question. Um, yes. So one of the points that the pastor made that was awesome. He has middle school kids and he said, they gave a warning. Hey, this is going to be PG 13. But he said, you know what? The world is teaching your kids about sex. And I want the church to teach my kids about sex. And he said, so if you think it's awkward for you, my middle school kids are listening to their dad preach right now. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay. Amen. So it was uh so to answer your question, yes. Uh, my family, my daughter didn't, I so regret she, we, put her in the other church uh, for this and, and we sh she should have been there. So we're going to have her listen to it. And this is a, just an idea I'm throwing out there, but um, so something I'm doing with one of my buddies, he actually invited me to do it. And I think it's a great idea. There's like a daddy daughter dance at uh, one of our local churches. And it's actually not my church. It's his church. And we go to a different Protestant churches, but um, he invited me and it's an awesome idea where like, our daughters are only three and four years old, but they're getting like dressed up in gowns and stuff. And then dad gets like dressed up in a suit and whatever. And we take them out and we go like um, to this big dance and just like celebrate them. But it's exactly what you're saying. Like it's the antidote to all the bad relationships or, you know, all the guys that they might pursue that are just not going to be good uh, for them and for their future. And it's like, how do we show them, what they should be treated like. And we need to practice that from this super early age. And how do we do that as fathers? Yeah. And so taking them to something it, like that, I was like, that's such an awesome idea. And he proposed it. So it was kind of a easy, you know, base hit for me because I could just say yes to his good idea. But um, I just wanted to throw that out there. If you guys have anything like that around where you live or yeah. if you want to look. Yeah. I, I challenge you to raise the stakes too. My, my daughter's old school did it. It was, freaking awesome. But we did, we turn it into a night, right? I take her on a date, get her like a little flower, uh, give that to her dress up. We'd go eat dinner together. It doesn't matter what age, right? That started They were my daughter was young and, and went through for three years while we were there, four years, five years while we were there. And so, you know, you turn it into a whole thing, dude, it's beautiful. It's, it was one of my favorite nights of the, of the year and the school set that up. It wasn't even the church, um, public school. And so, yeah, just, you know, you guys take your daughters out somewhere fun, have a little dinner, have a little special, you know, night. And it's, it's pretty awesome. And you, you will not regret that. It's going to be rad. I'm excited for you. I do that with Stu sometimes too. You can know your friends. <laughs> Dude, um, I was just about you know, to say that you beat me have to them, it. Have them, have them get all dressed up. <laughs> you can get them a little flower, take them out, uh, make him buy though. Cause you got more money. Yeah. Um, but right. you, can, you can do that as well. So make sure he shaves. Yeah, I need a shave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
guys, this was fun. Appreciate the conversation. Hope you guys got something out of it. Um, go, go take action and, and, uh, get better, uh, in your health. Appreciate you. Any last comments, thoughts? Oh, cool. Oh, Aaron, May 1st through 3rd. I don't know if you heard, come hang out with a bunch of dudes. It'll help your marriage. I promise. Yeah. Um, I'll have to see how I can work that in the schedule (laughs) from Texas, but, uh, it would be nice to be local. That'd be easier, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really interested. It sounds awesome and uh, something I need to do more, carve out time like that. So, yeah, buddy. Sweet, man. All right, guys. All right, boys. All right. Hope everybody enjoyed that. Um, you know, hey, maybe you took some tips away. Maybe you uh, got some action items out of that. But um, if you want to join a tribe that's uh, really intentional about uh, becoming healthy, um, we're actually opening up, uh, our next house. It's going to be house three of the mastermind. Um, and we're starting it in September of 23. So you can actually apply right now. You can go to storehouse 310.com backslash mastermind. There's a mastermind tab. There's a big join now button and uh, you can submit your application. Uh, it's limited to 15 men, uh, that will join this next group. Um, it is going to be, uh, an amazing tribe. We've already had some applications come in and uh, the the, uh, the caliber of the men in this mastermind group uh, will absolutely make you better. So if you're interested, go check it out. Again, storehouse310.com backslash mastermind. Go apply and uh, become a kinetic man. See you. Thank you, friends, for listening to Filling the Storehouse. If you are growth-minded and community-focused and willing to take uncommon action to redefine success and live an abundant life, visit our website at www.storehouse310.com to see all the ways we can connect. Yeah, on our website, you can find information on everything we're doing, like joining our meetup page to get the details on our webinars and our local Thursday gatherings here in Colorado. From our site, you can also find information on and sign up for our next retreat. Finally, we always appreciate your love and support. Please share this episode and go rate us on your podcast player of choice. Thank you again. Now go fill the storehouse.